Today we had our Mitsubishi Heavy Industries 7 kilowatt split system uh, which we installed in our house just over five years ago. Today we had it replaced and I'm not overly happy about it. Hey guys, Chris the Ultimate Recycler. This is a scrapping video. We're gonna scrap this unit out and see what value we can get. There's gonna be copper aluminum radiators, there's gonna be copper wire, there's gonna be circuit boards. I'm not sure what else. I think it's pretty good value scrapping these things. There's no gas in it because it's just been removed for, by the air conditioner guy that's put a new one in the house, uh, just over five years old, not happy about it, just out of warranty, and it shouldn't happen. But I'll talk to you a little bit of that as we get along uh, scrapping this. So I'll move it down to the shed. I'm not gonna do it today, but we'll pick up this video when I next get back to it, and we'll see what's involved in pulling one of these things apart. So fast forward a couple of months, maybe nearly three months, uh, the air conditioner has been sitting in my backyard all that time and it's time to deal with it. Now in that time, my grumpiness has abated somewhat. In fact, I can't remember exactly what happened, but I know that it was just outside warranty and it packed up and it gave a fault code. It was in the middle of winter and we needed it for heating and it gave a fault code which indicated an outdoor sensor. Uh, we got an air conditioner guy to come and have a look at it and uh, he replaced that still had the same or di a slightly different fault code or something there was a bit of confusion about that and then he replaced another sensor and then he tried replacing one of the boards which are fairly expensive and in the end he actually put it down as a faulty compressor um, but this Mitsubishi Heavy Industries he said he's had a few problems with them and he said he certainly wouldn't recommend them they're their backup service and their warranty departments aren't very good to deal with. He he was quite blunt actually, and I figure he's dealing with these things nearly all the time, so that's got to be valuable information. I'm not on here to, to put companies down, but from my experience and from what our local repair guy said, don't touch these things. Now, interestingly, we actually replaced it with a Mitsubishi um, Electrical Corporation unit and they're a different company, totally different company. So just be aware of that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is scrap this out. Uh, I asked the guy to leave it here because I like to scrap things out as we all know. Uh, he said he used to actually knock them apart himself uh, when he had downtime uh, because the copper aluminum radiators certainly add up to a fair bit. But um, he hadn't had time to do it for a while and I actually said, well, if you get a pile of them, let me know because I might have time to scrap them out. I don't really either, but, you know, you say these things. But anyway, he left it here with the offcuts of the copper pipe. So I'm going to scrap it all down and we'll see how much value we get out of it. I'll try and keep a bit of a track of my time. So there's two units. This one was up on the carport roof, but that's normally outside somewhere. And this is obviously the inside unit. So I'll probably start in the morning because I'm going to run out of light here tonight. So that's the deal. We're going to scrap it out. We'll keep track of our time and we'll work out how much return we can get in scrapping out one of these Mitsubishi Heavy Industry air conditioners. So let's get into this inverter and reduce the um, size and the weight of it a bit because I want to scrap it out inside the shed mostly, but I can't move this in. It's too big and too heavy. Let's all take the cowling off, all the uh, casing, save all the screws of course and uh, we'll try and reduce its size. And after that gust of wind blew my tripod over and broke my camera mount, I've, um, I've got to this stage. So it's only 10 minutes in. I've just taken the metal shielding off. Didn't take long at all. A little bit of plastic stuff. We can see all the copper aluminum radiators here. So now that I know there's no gas in it, which is great, I'll just chop off the copper pipes and we'll deal with the radiators a bit later on but that will reduce the size of this inverter quite a lot. Look at the size of the fan on it, it's massive. 
So one nut just holds that on. There's a bracket there for the motor behind it. So we'll, I think the bottom plate comes off too, which is fairly heavy gauge steel. So that will make it easy to get into the workshop and then we'll continue in there. So barely five minutes later and the thing looks like it's exploded. It really came apart very easily once we removed the panel screws. So really just probably 15 minutes, maybe 20 tops. Uh, I think you could certainly do it quicker than that. Lots of copper pipes. I've just cut through one pipe there to re remove this big radiator. Uh, and really we just have empty space. I'll get the compressor off the bottom panel and then we'll be able to take it all inside. You do have to be aware there's going to be compressor oil, so don't do it on your nice clean driveway or on a lawn that you don't want to uh, kill spots in. Uh, so really, not much else to go here. Uh, lots of good copper, lots of copper aluminium radiators. We have the control box there with the board and everything in it. And uh, the fan, just in brackets, a couple of great big uh, transformers. They're probably aluminium windings. We'll check those out in a minute. All right, we'll just tidy up. We do have a big pile of uh, just light gauge pressing steel to go to the transfer station and a little bit of plastic. Now that we're inside, we shouldn't have to worry about any more wind incidents blowing our, micro, our camera over. So this big bracket only has the electric motor on it. So that's pretty easy to remove. It's actually gone very rusty on the shaft. Okay, it plugs in. But we won't worry about unplugging it. We might as well get electric motor weight for the plug too. Well, there we go. Now, sometimes I pull out these, depending on how an electric motor is mounted, these rubber grommets are actually really handy, so I often do save them. Would have been nicer if there was four of them. All right, electric motor bin. We'll weigh up all the scrap at the end. We have some wiring and a plug the other end. We do need to remove the plugs. We'll make a big pile of wire and we'll weigh, weigh that up at the end. We can get rid of this bracket now. Next piece is another bracket with these two transformers on them. They've got big spools of copper. Are they transformers or are they... No, they're not a solenoid, I don't think. All right, maybe some sort of inductor. Let's see if the wire is actually copper or aluminium. Yeah, look bright. And don't know if you saw that. Let's get a close-up. That shows it pretty clearly. Bright silver. So it's um, very soft, as aluminium is. Of course, copper is as well. But that's clearly aluminium. So there's no copper value in these. However, the scrapyards still buy them as transformers. They just have a listing on their price list for transformer. They would be well aware that some windings are aluminium these days. Eventually, the price will probably plummet. Um because there'll be less and less copper in them. But at this stage, they're still transformers in my book. So that's the bin they're going in. Of course, they're not quite as heavy as a normal copper transformer because aluminium is lighter than copper, but still a fair bit of weight there. And that's the other one. More scrap steel. The next part is the actual control module with the board in it, a fair bit of wiring, uh, there's even a fuse down here. So let's start pulling this apart. This will be a little bit more time consuming. But we'll work through it. Get these brackets off so we can get the wires out of the road. Uh, I'm not sure how that comes off. It looks like it's just clipped. There we go. Yeah. Well, if we don't have to put it back together, we don't have to be too gentle, do we? Okay, we have a couple of earthing wires here. We'll take, oh, what we'll do is we'll just snip the wires, save undoing the screws. Same with these, the plugs have got to come off anyway. I've got quite a few ferrite beads here, probably to stop interference with other household items. I do keep all these ferrite beads. Most, most scrappers just put them in with the steel. Uh, they can certainly go as ferrous scrap. And I put them all in a jar like I do with a lot of things. And surprisingly, people buy them every so often. I don't know what they use them for. All right, we might unplug the wires off the board. Because the air conditioner guy replaced one of the boards. I'm not sure which one. But if it's a brand new board, maybe there's a market for it. I mean, any of you scrappers that pick up one of these air conditioners are not going to know it's a new board or not, so it would probably just go in the scrap. We'll pull it out and have a look anyway. 
but I'll try not to cut any wires on the board just at the moment. We'll unplug what we can unplug and we'll have a better look at it. So in the interests of saving a bit of time, I just trimmed um, some of the wires and took the panels and associated bits and pieces off this board. I think this is the original board. It's actually not much more than the power board, although it's relatively complicated on the back. Um, but I don't think this one was the one that was replaced. I think it was the one in the inside unit. Uh, so I don't see any real value here. I did ask the guy if there was a resale market for secondhand boards, if you have a known board or a board that's in known good condition. Uh, and even the new one that he tried in ours, and he basically said no. He said, um, it's kind of sad that they don't get reused, but he said if you put a secondhand board, if he as a technician put a secondhand board in someone's air conditioner and there was a house fire, um, he said all sorts of trouble would happen. So he just doesn't do it. He just buys new boards all the time. And a lot of the time, the new boards are more expensive or they, they make the whole unit not viable to fix, which is really sad. Um, certainly things need to be fixed in that situation I think we shouldn't be throwing away perfectly good stuff but what do you do um, it's fairly involved process these um, boards and getting into them too you can't just do it as a bit of a home handyman type thing anyway I'm saving the scrap here at least it will get recycled chopping all these wires off and we've got an aluminium heat sink here as well so we'll take this board out of the plastic housing and remove the heat sink so there are a few fuses on here which i'll save i like to save as many reusable parts as i can there are also a few well it's a decent um choke with copper wire there there's a couple of smaller transformers there's another fuse that one's soldered in so we'll salvage what we can i don't get any value for the power boards so that can just go to the transfer station as e-waste once i've finished taking parts off it there are also some relays in some of these black boxes some might be capacitors if they're marked with a, a microfarad symbol that's a capacitor um, so is that one but that one's a relay and the designation on the board um, doesn't say it doesn't start with a C so it's most likely a relay the easy way to tell too is on the back or where they solder on capacitors only have two wires relays usually have four or six usually six I think let's take this one off and have a look you could also break the case yeah there's a contact point there there will be a copper spool in here there we go you can just see it poking out there so a little bit of copper wire in that. So relays can go in with transformers. Uh, some people even try and salvage the little silver buttons, but uh, they're too microscopic for me to worry about. Uh, we'll try and get this choke off. Very thick copper wire on that one. And again, that can go as a transformer, unless you want to try and salvage the copper. Little transformer there. It's probably getting a bit small. Little coil or choke there again. I don't think I'll worry about those. So that's all the parts I want off that one, other than the aluminium heatsink. There's a large copper topped um, device of some description. I don't even know what it would be. Big voltage regulator or something. Um, the copper's probably not overly thick on it. We might lever it off and see. A lot of heatsink compound on it. Looks pretty flash on top, but I don't think there's much copper in there. It doesn't really have very much weight at all. Let's see if we can break a bit off the corner. Uh, it's only a very thin sheet of copper, probably just for heat transfer into the heatsink. That can just go in our e-waste, I think with the rest of the board. Now some people do take these capacitors for irony aluminium. It's not worth the hassle in my opinion. Your, your price return for irony aluminium is pretty low. It takes a mountain of those to make a kilo. Same with the smaller transformers and uh, anything else that people chase like the little silver contacts. 
Um, I know a lot of people chase them, but it's more a hobby uh, as far as any sort of return per hour saving them. It's not worth it. I've never seen anyone post a video showing that it's even close to viable. Okay, that one's in our e-waste box. What have we got here? A few metal brackets on here just to clean up the aluminium. Just check these brackets. They're definitely steel. And we have a nice big chunk of extruded aluminium. So the only bit left we have here is just a very small little power board here. Again, it's got a fuse in it. It's um, probably worth taking the transformer off and maybe the coil, but that's about it. And the rest of this can just... Oh, there's a fuse out here too. In fact, we might even take that fuse holder. It'd be a handy little holder. So let's take these plugs off. Pop the fuse out carefully, which is not blown. Still a good fuse. And we'll take the screw out from the middle. And there's a very usable part, a little fuse holder. Let's get this little board out of here. And the rest of that can just go to steel. Along with our other bits, another fuse. Let's get this transformer if we can. It's a big enough one. That was pretty easy. And while we're at it, then we'll take this little coil. It's very marginal, this one. Normally don't bother. Depends on my mood. Still a little bit of copper in it. I'm not going to say every bit adds up because so many scrappers say that I get sick of hearing it. So let's just say, take it if you feel like it. All right, let's get on to the internal part of the air conditioner. Uh, this one's going to have a lot of plastic, unfortunately. But um, I've still got the um, radiators and the compressor and everything to clean up on the other part. But we'll do that later because it's likely to make our bench pretty oily. So I'm not sure how all this comes apart. I would assume the whole plastic casing comes off pretty easily. It might be just clipped. Oh, here we go. That just comes off. Then there's screws through here and the filters. All right, we'll take all this out. There's going to be quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of plastic on this lot. So screws on the front and behind the filters and then clips at the back and the plastic housing will come off. We'll get this out of the shed to give us a bit more room to move. Now we have a back panel to come off. A bit tricky this, they've hidden screws everywhere. But eventually if we just keep taking screws out, eventually things fall apart. I guess if you service and repair these for a living you'd get to know the sequence and most scrappers know when you scrap it something for the first time it's always a bit of nutting out so we would certainly do it quicker if we did a few of them i have little motors here to operate the louvers and of course they have wiring looms going to them okay that's got the louver part off now we have the control mechanism at the end All right, we'll inspect that control box shortly. Let's get the bulk of this off our bench. Okay, I think we can just about get the radiator assembly out of here now. And it's just a big fan, cylinder fan assembly here. I think they call them a squirrel cage fan. Another couple of screws up this end. How are we going now? Okay, we're clear. And we also have a big length of copper pipe still on the end of this one. Now there's going to be a fan motor in the end here. Well, that was a battle, but I've got the motor off the end here. Uh, so this is pretty much all plastic. So we'll keep the motor, we'll take this outside. Okay, now to the, this is really all we want out of the inside part of the unit is the copper aluminium radiators. 
Uh, so there's just a bracket on this end. You can see the copper pipes looping around there. I think this bracket will actually just uh, tap off. I don't think we need to cut any copper pipes to get that off. There's a plastic bracket down the middle which will unclip. Well, it's got a, a wire clip there. That comes off easily. And another one this end. So the challenge here is to clean up this copper alley radiator as best we can so there's no impurities. We can't leave plastic brackets on it. We can't leave any steel. And I think this end you'll find will be um, steel. So we'll have to cut some copper pipes to clean that up. It looks like we have another plastic strip on this edge here with some more wire clips. All right, we need to get this bracket off this end, which does unclip with a bit of fiddling. So the plastic bracket on this end basically ties all these little radiators together. It had plastic clips, but geez, it took a bit of levering to get it off. Anyway, hopefully it's worth it. So that end's nice and clean. The other end we're going to have to do a bit more work on. So I've brought you a bit closer to see this. We have some insulating stuff. It's like a heavy rubber. We should be able to cut that off. Uh, this uh, padding here just goes around the copper pipe, so that'll be easy to get off. And then all these copper long pipes that go right through the radiator, this end they have, they go through a steel bracket, and we need to get that bracket off, which means we actually have to cut all those little copper loops off the end to be able to pry the the piece of steel off. If we don't go, do that, our price will be downgraded a lot. So it should be pretty easy. The copper does cut very easily. It does take a bit of fiddling around to get the steel bracket off. Uh, but we'll work on that and we'll have to do similar to the radiators outside from the other part of the air conditioner. But once we've done that, we'll have lots of little bits of number two copper uh, because some of them have solder on them and also they've had compressor oil, oil through them. Uh, so We'll have clean aluminium copper radiators. We'll have number two copper little bits and pieces. We'll get this insulation off and then we'll finish this bit. We'll get back and tidy up the other radiators much the same. And then we can start weighing up and see what value we've got. Now I do have a reciprocating saw, a Makita reciprocating saw still in its box that I have to do a review on. It would be ideal for trimming these up. So I'll probably find one of these when I do a review on that. I don't have time to unpack it at the moment. I've just got some cable shears. Uh, these copper pipes are very thin and copper is very soft. So these shears have, actually we won't do it right there because we want to leave it round so that the steel can come off. I think we'll just trim off the, the hoses, the pipes that go elsewhere. And you see how easy that cuts through. And then we can trim them up with a hacksaw later when we can get in there. So I'll just use this for now to separate the individual radiators and then we can cut the little end pieces off with the hacksaw it probably won't go through the bigger stuff i don't want to strain these but these are really handy these things uh one under there and this one so there we go i've got one radiator assembly off and that'll be easy to clean up with a hacksaw so that we can just lever that steel bracket off the end so that's the process for now i'll just keep cleaning this up uh, it certainly doesn't take much to snip through the pipe and then we can tidy it up much more easily outside with the vice out there okay i'm back outside and just cleaning up the ends of these radiators i've discovered that the holes around the copper tubes are quite large and there's a fair bit of clearance so I've been using the, um, the shears and just cutting these end bits off and they're just going straight in a bucket as number two. And then the pipes just squash just to get them round enough. And then the steel should lever off them. It's, uh, it's much quicker and much easier than trying to run down there with a hacksaw and cutting them off. And I think the steel will come off here pretty easily once we get it started. trouble is the aluminium fins are very soft so you don't have much to lever against but there we go you can see that's gonna gonna come off pretty easily so this is what we have to do to each of the radiators and uh, that finishes the cleaning up of these and then we'll just have a steel plate here 
to go with the shred. And we're just about finished the job. We just have the main control panel to do and to clean the copper pipes up off this compressor here. And there's all our radiators. That's probably the, the money shot of this uh, scrap out, although the copper pipe will add up to be a bit. And adding to the copper pipe, we have a bowl of copper noodles. Yep, they're all the bits cut off. Some of them have got a lot of solder on them. Some of them have still got a bit of uh, compressor oil dripping out of them. They'll all just go as number two copper, no problems. Now we just have to clean this compressor up. The compressor has been processed and that can go to the scrapyard. They do buy the compressors as is. We have a bucket full of number two copper and there's a fair bit of weight in there, including all the noodles I've tipped in down the bottom. So I'll weigh that up shortly. I kept a few bits of copper, clean copper separate because they can probably go as candy copper. Slightly better grade, but really there's not a lot of difference. Uh, bit of brass, a bit of irony brass as well. And we just have this main control circuit board to clean up and we're finished and we can write a list and weigh everything up. I don't think there's going to be much value in here. We've just got to chop the plugs off the wires again. So it will add to our insulated copper wire pile, which is paying over $4 a kilo still, I think. Certainly worth saving, especially the heavier stuff. Now, someone commented on a recent video of mine about a lot of internal wiring and appliances now is actually aluminium wire. Uh, have you guys seen a lot of that? I certainly haven't. I've certainly seen it in transformers, but uh, I haven't seen it in general purpose wiring as yet, so maybe it will come in. Okay, that's just a little motor that oscillates the louvers. I think we had two of those. So we'll weigh up all the electric motors and the transformers. Uh, and any solenoids, and they can all go uh, in one pile because they're pretty well around about a dollar a kilo. Okay, now we need to get into this circuit board. Um, it's it's well shielded. These just come off with clips by the looks of them. Oh, there we go. Not an overly complicated board either. I don't know if this was one he replaced or whether he tried a new one and then took it out again. Honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, but there's certainly not much value on there for a scrapper. Okay, I won't bore you with this. We'll just clip all the wires out and get the board out of here. Uh, it's basically just plastic housing. So we'll clean this up and get back to you shortly. So this was pretty boring from a scrapper's perspective. There's really just a lot of plastic and a very average board. I can't be sure if, sure if this was a new one or not, so I'm not going to worry about it. It can go straight to the transfer station. I might just pop the uh, transformer off there. But uh, there's nothing really. I've popped the fuse off it. There's nothing else I want on it. So hardly any value there. We have a little bit more wire. Um, so I think that's about it. Let's get the notepad out. Okay, before we have a look at the notepad, that's what I have to get rid of. Sh shred steel and the rest of the case from the unit inside. A bit of, uh, bit of rubbish there. That's all our lovely radiators. You might be surprised what they add up to. Let's go and have a look at the notepad. Okay, I've finished sorting everything and we've got some hardware in a tub here as well. But let's look at the notepad and we'll scan. You see, even the compressor was worth quite a bit because it weighs 11 kilos. Candy copper, number two copper, I knew that would be a fair bit, $42, uh, $44 there. Not a lot of copper wire. The motors and transformers added up to a bit, little bit. There's the radiators, $70 worth. There was 12 and a half kilos bit of brass, irony brass, and even that piece of extruded aluminium was $1.35, $150, plus I've got some hardware to sell or and or use, and for anyone that does uh, collect steel and takes that to the scrapyards, you know, there's a few dollars there. Not a great deal, but some. So how's that? And time-wise, I did it in around about, or oh, just under two hours, but I was mucking around filming and everything. You, I reckon you could knock one of these part in just over an hour. And if you had a few to do, you'd get pretty quick at it. That's pretty good money. So if you see one of these alongside of the road, grab it. So with scrap prices pretty good, and especially copper, these things are really quite valuable for scrap. The good thing about these split systems is that if you do see them on the side of the road, you know they don't have gas in them because they've got to be dismantled to be removed from the house. Uh, there are a lot of them like this one that, that blow up prematurely due to what, what shall we say planned obsolescence hey it's it's happening everywhere 
if you see one on the side of the road, you know it's right to grab, you know it's a pretty easy scrap, and you know it's not a bad bottom line. So I hope you enjoyed that journey. Probably turned out to be quite a long video. We'll see how it ends up when I edit it. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.